said the other combatant, Senor Governor, I will tell you in a very few words. Your worship must know that this gentleman has just now won more than a thousand reals in that gambling house opposite, and God knows how. I was there, and gave more than one doubtful point in his favor, very much against what my conscience told me. He made off with his winnings, and when I made sure he was going to give me a crown, or so at least by way of a present, as it is usual and customary to give men of quality of my sort who stand by to see fair or foul play, and back up swindles, and prevent quarrels, he pocketed his money and left the house. Indignant at this I followed him, and speaking him fairly and civilly asked him to give me if it were only eight reals, for he knows I am an honest man, and that I have neither profession nor property, for my parents never brought me up to any or left me any, but the rogue, who is a greater thief than Cacus, and a greater sharper than Andradilla, would not give me more than four reals, so your worship may see how little shame and conscience he has. But by my faith if you had not come up I'd have made him disgorge his winnings, and he'd have learned what the range of the steel minus yard was. What say you to this? asked Sancho. The other replied that all his antagonist said was true, and that he did not choose to give him more than four reals because he very often gave him money, and that those who expected presents ought to be civil and take what is given them with a cheerful countenance, and not make any claim against winners unless they know them for certain to be sharpers and their winnings to be unfairly won, and that there could be no better proof that he himself was an honest man than his having refused to give anything, for sharpers always pay tribute to lookers minus on who know them. That is true, said the majordomo, let your worship consider what is to be done with these men. What is to be done, said Sancho, is this, you, the winner, be you good, bad, or indifferent, give this assailant of yours a hundred reals at once, and you must disperse thirty more for the poor prisoners, and you who have neither profession nor property, and hang about the island in idleness, take these hundred reals now, and some time of the day to minus morrow quit the island under sentence of banishment for ten years, and under pain of completing it in another life if you violate the sentence, for I'll hang you on a gibbet, or at least the hangman will by my orders, not a word from either of you, or I'll make him feel my hand. The one paid down the money and the other took it, and the latter quitted the island, while the other went home, and then the governor said, either I am not good for much, or I'll get rid of these gambling houses, for it strikes me they are very mischievous. This one at least, said one of the notaries, your worship will not be able to get rid of, for a great man owns it, and what he loses every year is beyond all comparison more than what he makes by the cards. On the minor gambling houses your worship may exercise your power, and it is they that do most harm and shelter the most barefaced practices, for in the Don Quixote Chapter 49676 Houses of lords and gentlemen of quality the notorious sharpers dare not attempt to play their tricks, and as the vice of gambling has become common, it is better that men should play in houses of repute than in some tradesmen's, where they catch an unlucky fellow in the small hours of the morning and skin him alive. I know already, notary, that there is a good deal to he said on that point, said Sancho. And now a tipstaff came up with a young man in his grasp and said, Senor Governor, this youth was coming towards us, and as soon as he saw the officers of justice he turned about and ran like a deer, a sure proof that he must be some evil minus doer. I ran after him, and had it not been that he stumbled and fell, I should never have caught him. What did you run for, fellow, said Sancho. To which the young man replied, Senor, it was to avoid answering all the questions officers of justice put. What are you by trade? A weaver. And what do you weave? Lance heads, with your worship's good leave. You're facetious with me. You plume yourself on being a wag? Very good, and where were you going just now? To take the air, senor. And where does one take the air in this island? Where it blows. Good. Your answers are very much to the point. You are a smart youth, but take notice that I am the air, and that I blow upon you in mine astern and send you to jail. Ho there. Lay hold of him and take him off. I'll make him sleep there to minus night without air. By God, said the young man, your worship will make me sleep in jail just as soon as make me king. Why shan't I make thee sleep in jail, said Sancho. Have I not the power to arrest thee and release thee whenever I like? Don Quixote Chapter 49677 All the power your worship has, said the young man, won't be able to make me sleep in jail. How? Not able, said Sancho, take him away at once where he'll see his mistake with his own eyes, even if the jailer is willing to exert his interested generosity on his behalf, 
for I'll lay a penalty of 2,000 ducats on him if he allows him to stir a step from the prison. That's ridiculous, said the young man, the fact is, all the men on earth will not make me sleep in prison. Tell me, you devil, said Sancho, have you got any angel that will deliver you and take off the irons I am going to order them to put upon you? Now, senor governor, said the young man in a sprightly manner, let us be reasonable and come to the point. Granted your worship may order me to be taken to prison, and to have irons and chains put on me, and to be shut up in a cell, and may lay heavy penalties on the jailer if he lets me out, and that he obeys your orders, still, if I don't choose to sleep and choose to remain awake all night without closing an eye, will your worship with all your power be able to make me sleep if I don't choose? No, truly, said the secretary, and the fellow has made his point. So then, said Sancho, it would be entirely of your own choice you would keep from sleeping, not in opposition to my will. No, senor, said the youth, certainly not. Well then, go, and God be with you, said Sancho, be off home to sleep, and God give you sound sleep, for I don't want to rob you of it, but for the future, let me advise you don't joke with the authorities, because you may come across someone who will bring down the joke on your own skull. The young man went his way, and the governor continued his round, and shortly afterwards two tipstaffs came up with a man in custody and said, Senor Governor, this person, who seems to be a man, is not so, but a woman, and not an ill minus favored one, in man's clothes. They raised two or three lanterns to her face, and by their light they distinguished the features of a woman to all appearance of the age of sixteen, or a little more, with her hair gathered into a gold and green silk net, and fair as a thousand pearls. They scanned her from head to foot, and observed that she had on red silk stockings with garters of white taffety bordered with gold and pearl, her breeches were of green and gold stuff, and under an open jacket or jerkin of the same she wore a doublet of the finest white and gold cloth, her shoes were white and such as men wear, she carried no sword at her belt, but only. Don Quixote Chapter 49678 A richly ornamented dagger, and on her fingers she had several handsome rings. In short, the girl seemed fair to look at in the eyes of all, and none of those who beheld her knew her, the people of the town said they could not imagine who she was, and those who were in the secret of the jokes that were to be practiced upon Sancho were the ones who were most surprised, for this incident or discovery had not been arranged by them, and they watched anxiously to see how the affair would end. Sancho was fascinated by the girl's beauty, and he asked her who she was, where she was going, and what had induced her to dress herself in that garb. She with her eyes fixed on the ground answered in modest confusion, I cannot tell you, senor, before so many people what it is of such consequence to me to have kept secret, one thing I wish to be known, that I am no thief or evildoer, but only an unhappy maiden whom the power of jealousy has led to break through the respect that is due to modesty. Hearing this the majordomo said to Sancho, make the people stand back, senor governor, that this lady may say what she wishes with less embarrassment. Sancho gave the order, and all except the majordomo, the head minus carver, and the secretary fell back. Finding herself then in the presence of no more, the damsel went on to say, I am the daughter, sirs, of Pedro Perez Mazorca, the wool minus farmer of this town, who is in the habit of coming very often to my father's house. That won't do, Sonora, said the majordomo, for I know Pedro Perez very well, and I know he has no child at all, either son or daughter, and besides, though you say he is your father, you had then that he comes very often to your father's house. I had already noticed that, said Sancho. I am confused just now, sirs, said the damsel, and I don't know what I am saying, but the truth is that I am the daughter of Diego de la Lana, whom you must all know. Aye, that will do, said the majordomo, for I know Diego de la Lana, and know that he is a gentleman of position, and a rich man, and that he has a son and a daughter, and that since he was left a widower nobody in all this town can speak of having seen his daughter's face, for he keeps her so closely shut up that he does not give even the son a chance of seeing her and for all that report says she is extremely beautiful. It is true, said the damsel, and I am that daughter, whether report lies or not as to my beauty, you, sirs, will have decided by this time, as you have seen me, and with this she began to weep bitterly. On seeing this the secretary leant over to the head minus carver's ear, and said to him in a low voice, something serious has no doubt happened this poor maiden, that she goes wandering. Don Quixote Chapter 49679 From home in such a dress, and at such an hour, and one of her rank too. There can be no doubt about it, returned the carver, and moreover her tears confirm your suspicion. 
Sancho gave her the best comfort he could and entreated her to tell them without any fear what had happened her, as they would all earnestly and by every means in their power endeavor to relieve her. The fact is, sirs, said she, that my father has kept me shut up these ten years, for so long is it since the earth received my mother. Mass is said at home in a sumptuous chapel, and all this time I have seen but the sun in the heaven by day, and the moon and the stars by night, nor do I know what streets are like, or plazas, or churches, or even men, except my father, and a brother I have, and Pedro Perez the wool minus farmer, whom, because he came frequently to our house, I took it into my head to call my father, to avoid naming my own. This seclusion and the restrictions laid upon my going out, were it only to church, have been keeping me unhappy for many a day and month past, I longed to see the world, or at least the town where I was born, and it did not seem to me that this wish was inconsistent with the respect maidens of good quality should have for themselves. When I heard them talking of bull minus fights taking place, and of javelin games, and of acting plays, I asked my brother who is a year younger than myself, to tell me what sort of things these were, and many more that I had never seen, he explained them to me as well as he could, but the only effect was to kindle in me a still stronger desire to see them. At last, to cut short the story of my ruin, I begged and entreated my brother Minus O that I had never made such an entreaty Minus and once more she gave way to a burst of weeping. Proceed, Sonora, said the Majordomo, and finish your story of what has happened to you, for your words and tears are keeping us all in suspense. I have but little more to say, though many a tear to shed, said the damsel, for ill minus place desires can only be paid for in some such way. The maiden's beauty had made a deep impression on the head minus Carver's heart, and he again raised his lantern for another look at her, and thought they were not tears she was shedding, but seed minus pearl, or dew of the meadow, nay, he exalted them still higher, and made oriental pearls of them, and fervently hoped her misfortune might not be so great a one as her tears and sobs seemed to indicate. The governor was losing patience at the length of time the girl was taking to tell her story, and told her not to keep them waiting any longer, for it was late, and there still remained a good deal of the town to be gone over. She, with broken sobs and half minus suppressed sighs, went on to say, My misfortune, my misadventure, is simply this, that I entreated my brother to dress me up as a man in a suit of his clothes, and take me some night, when our father was asleep, to see the whole town, he, overcome by my entreaties, consented, and dressing me in this suit in himself and clothes of mine that fitted him as if made for him, for he is not a hair on his chin, and might pass for a very beautiful young girl, to minus. Night, about an hour ago, more or less, we left the house. Don Quixote Chapter 49 680 And guided by our youthful and foolish impulse we made the circuit of the whole town, and then, as we were about to return home, we saw a great troop of people coming, and my brother said to me, Sister, this must be the round, stir your feet, and put wings to them, and follow me as fast as you can, lest they recognize us, for that would be a bad business for us, and so saying he turned about and began, I cannot say to run but to fly. In less than six paces I fell from fright, and then the officer of justice came up and carried me before your worships, where I find myself put to shame before all these people as whimsical and vicious. So then, Sonora, said Sancho, no other mishap has befallen you, nor was it jealousy that made you leave home, as you said at the beginning of your story? Nothing has happened me, said she, nor was it jealousy that brought me out, but merely a longing to see the world, which did not go beyond seeing the streets of this town. The appearance of the tipstaffs with her brother in custody, whom one of them had overtaken as he ran away from his sister, now fully confirmed the truth of what the damsel said. He had nothing on but a rich petticoat and a short blue damask cloak with fine gold lace, and his head was uncovered and adorned only with its own hair, which looked like rings of gold, so bright and curly was it. The governor, the majordomo, and the carver went aside with him, and, unheard by his sister, asked him how he came to be in that dress and he with no less shame and embarrassment told exactly the same story as his sister, to the great delight of the enamored carver, the governor, however, said to them, in truth, young lady and gentleman, this has been a very childish affair, and to explain your folly and rashness there was no necessity for all this delay and all these tears and sighs. For if you had said we are so minus and minus so, and we escaped from our father's house in this way in order to ramble about, out of mere curiosity and with no other object, there would have been an end of the matter, and none of these little sobs and tears and all the rest of it. That is true, said the damsel, but you see the confusion I was in was so great it did not let me behave as I ought. No harm has been done, said Sancho, 
Come, we will lead you at your father's house, perhaps they will not have missed you, and another time don't be so childish or eager to see the world, for a respectable damsel should have a broken leg and keep at home, and the woman and the hen by gaddying about are soon lost, and she who is eager to see is also eager to be seen. I say no more. The youth thanked the governor for his kind offer to take them home, and they directed their steps towards the house, which was not far off. On reaching it the youth threw a pebble up at a grating, and immediately a woman minus servant who was waiting for them came down and opened the door to them, and they went in, leaving the party marveling as much at their grace and beauty as at the fancy they had for seeing the world by night, and without quitting. Don Quixote Chapter 49-681 The village, which however, they set down to their youth. The head minus carver was left with a heart pierced through and through, and he made up his mind on the spot to demand the damsel in marriage of her father on the morrow, making sure she would not be refused him as he was a servant of the dukes, and even to Sancho ideas and schemes of marrying the youth to his daughter Sanchica suggested themselves, and he resolved to open the negotiation at the proper season, persuading himself that no husband could be refused to a governor's daughter. And so the night's round came to an end, and a couple of days later the government, whereby all his plans were overthrown and swept away, as will be seen farther on. Don Quixote Chapter 49-682 Chapter 50 Wherein is set forth who the enchanters and executioners were who flogged the duenna and pinched Don Quixote, and also what befell the page who carried the letter to Teresa Panza, Sancho Panza's wife. Side Hamid the painstaking investigator of the minute points of this voracious history, says that when Dona Rodriguez left her own room to go to Don Quixote's, another duenna who slept with her observed her, and as all duennas are fond of prying, listening, and sniffing, she followed her so silently that the good Rodriguez never perceived it, and as soon as the duenna saw her enter Don Quixote's room, not to fail in a duenna's invariable practice of tattling, she hurried off that instant. To report to the Duchess how Dona Rodriguez was closeted with Don Quixote. The Duchess told the Duke, and asked him to let her and Altisidora go, and see what the said duenna wanted with Don Quixote. The Duke gave them leave, and the pair cautiously and quietly crept to the door of the room, and posted themselves so close to it that they could hear all that was said inside. But when the Duchess heard how the Rodriguez had made public the Aranwas of her issues she could not restrain herself, nor Altisidora either, and so, filled with rage and thirsting for vengeance, they burst into the room and tormented Don Quixote and flogged the duenna in the manner already described, for indignities offered to their charms and self-minus esteem mightily provoke the anger of women and make them eager for revenge. The Duchess told the Duke what had happened, and he was much amused by it, and she, in pursuance of her design of making merry and diverting herself with Don Quixote, dispatched the page who had played the part of Dulcinea in the negotiations for her disenchantment, which Sancho Panza in the cares of government had forgotten all about, to Teresa Panza his wife with her husband's letter and another from herself, and also a great string of fine coral beads as a present. Now the history says this page was very sharp and quick minus witted, and eager to serve his lord and lady he set off very willingly for Sancho's village. Before he entered it he observed a number of women washing in a brook, and asked them if they could tell him whether there lived there a woman of the name of Teresa Panza, wife of one Sancho Panza, squire to a knight called Don Quixote of La Mancha. At the question a young girl who was washing stood up and said, Teresa Panza is my mother, and that Sancho is my father, and that knight is our master. Well then, miss, said the page, come and show me where your mother is, for I bring her a letter and a present from your father. That I will with all my heart, senor, said the girl, who seemed to be about fourteen. Don Quixote Chapter 5683 More or less, and leaving the clothes she was washing to one of her companions, and without putting anything on her head or feet, for she was bare minus legged, and had her hair hanging about her, away she skipped in front of the page's horse, saying, Come, your worship, our house is at the entrance of the town, and my mother is there, sorrowful enough at not having had any news of my father this ever so long. Well, said the page, I am bringing her such good news that she will have reason to thank God. And then, skipping, running, and capering, the girl reached the town, but before going into the house she called out at the door, Come out, Mother Teresa, come out, come out, here's a gentleman with letters and other things from my good father. At these words her mother Teresa Panza came out spinning a bundle of flax, in a grey petticoat, so short was it one would have fancied they to her shame had cut it short, a grey bodice of the same stuff, and a smock. 
She was not very old, though plainly past forty, strong, healthy, vigorous, and sun minus dried, and seeing her daughter and the page on horseback, she exclaimed, What's this child? What gentleman is this? A servant of my lady, Dona Teresa Panza, replied the page, and suiting the action to the word he flung himself off his horse, and with great humility advanced to kneel before the Lady Teresa, saying, Let me kiss your hand, Sonora Dona Teresa, as the lawful and only wife of Senor Don Sancho Panza, rightful governor of the island of Barataria. Ah, Senor, get up, do that, said Teresa, for I'm not a bit of a court lady, but only a poor country woman, the daughter of a clod crusher, and the wife of a squire minus errant, and not of any governor at all. You are, said the page, the most worthy wife of a most arch minus worthy governor, and as a proof of what I say accept this letter, and this present, and at the same time he took out of his pocket a string of coral beads with gold clasps, and placed it on her neck, and said, this letter is from his lordship the governor, and the other as well as these coral beads from my lady the duchess, who sends me to your worship. Teresa stood lost in astonishment, and her daughter just as much, and the girl said, may I die, but our master Don Quixote's at the bottom of this. He must have given father the government or county he so often promised him. That is the truth, said the page, for it is through Senor Don Quixote that Senor Sancho is now governor of the island of Barataria, as will be seen by this letter. Will your worship read it to me, noble sir, said Teresa, for though I can spin I can't read, not a scrap. Don Quixote Chapter 5684 nor I either, said Sanchica, but wait a bit, and I'll go and fetch someone who can read it, either the curate himself, or the bachelor Samson Carrasco, and they'll come gladly to hear any news of my father. There is no need to fetch anybody, said the page, for though I can't spin I can read, and I'll read it, and so he read it through, but as it has been already given it is not inserted here, and then he took out the other one from the duchess, which ran as follows. Friend Teresa, minus your husband Sancho's good qualities, of heart as well as of head, induced and compelled me to request my husband the duke to give him the government of one of his many islands. I am told he governs like a jur falcon, of which I am very glad, and my lord the duke, of course, also, and I am very thankful to heaven that I have not made a mistake in choosing him for that same government, for I would have Sonora Teresa know that a good governor is hard to find in this world and may God make me as good as Sancho's way of governing. Herewith I send you, my dear, a string of coral beads with gold clasps, I wish they were oriental pearls, but he who gives thee a bone does not wish to see thee dead. A time will come when we shall become acquainted and meet one another, but God knows the future. Commend me to your daughter Sanchica, and tell her for me to hold herself in readiness, for I mean to make a high match for her when she least expects it. They Tell me there are big acorns in your village, send me a couple of dozen or so, and I shall Value them greatly as coming from your hand and write to me at length to assure me of your health and well minus being, and if there be anything you stand in need of, it is but to open your mouth, and that shall be the measure, and so God keep you. From this place. Your loving friend, the Duchess. Ah, what a good, plain, lowly lady, said Teresa when she heard the letter, that I may be buried with ladies of that sort, and not the gentlewomen we have in this town, that fancy because they are gentlewomen the wind must not touch them and go to church with as much airs as if they were queens, no less, and seem to think they are disgraced if they look at a farmer's wife. And see here how this good lady, for all she's a duchess, calls me friend, and treats me as if I was her equal minus and equal may I see her with the tallest church minus tower in La Mancha. And as for the acorns, senor, I'll send her ladyship a pack and such big ones that one might come to see them as a show and a wonder. And now, Sanchica, see that the gentleman is comfortable, put up his horse, and get some eggs out of the stable, and cut plenty of bacon, and let's give him his dinner like a prince, for the good news he has. Brought, and his own bonny face deserve it all, and meanwhile I'll run out and give the neighbors the news of our good luck, and Father Curate, and Master Nicholas the Barber, who are and always have been such friends of thy father's. That I will, mother, said Sanchica, but mind, you must give me half of that string, for I don't think my lady the Duchess could have been so stupid as to send it all to you. Don Quixote Chapter 5685 It is all for thee, my child, said Teresa, but let me wear it round my neck for a few days, for verily it seems to make my heart glad. You will be glad too, said the page, when you see the bundle there is in this portmanteau, for it is a suit of the finest cloth, that the governor only wore one day out hunting and now sends, all for Sonora Sanchica. 
May he live a thousand years, said Sanchika, and the bearer as many, nay two thousand, if needful. With this Teresa hurried out of the house with the letters, and with the string of beads round her neck, and went along thrumming the letters as if they were a tambourine, and by chance coming across the curate and Samson Carrasco she began capering and saying, None of us poor now, faith. We've got a little government. I let the finest fine lady tackle me, and I'll give her a setting down. What's all this, Teresa Panza, said they, what madness is this, and what papers are those? The madness is only this, said she, that these are the letters of duchesses and governors, and these I have on my neck are fine coral beads, with Ave minus Marias and Paternosters of beaten gold, and I am a governess. God help us, said the curate, we don't understand you, Teresa, or know what you are talking about. There, you may see it yourselves, said Teresa, and she handed them the letters. The curate read them out for Samson Carrasco to hear, and Samson, and he regarded one another with looks of astonishment at what they had read, and the bachelor asked who had brought the letters. Teresa in reply bade them come with her to her house, and they would see the messenger, a most elegant youth, who had brought another present which was worth as much more. The curate took the coral beads from her neck and examined them again and again, and having satisfied himself as to their fineness he fell to wondering afresh, and said, By the gown I wear I don't know what to say or think of these letters and presents. On the one hand I can see and feel the fineness of these coral beads, and on the other I read how a duchess sends to beg for a couple of dozen of acorns. Square that if you can, said Carrasco, well, let's go and see the messenger, and from him we'll learn something about this mystery that has turned up. They did so, and Teresa returned with them. They found the page sifting a little barley for his horse, and Sanchica cutting a rasher of bacon to be paved with eggs for his dinner. Don Quixote Chapter 5686 His looks and his handsome apparel pleased them both greatly, and after they had saluted him courteously, and he them, Samson begged him to give them his news, as well of Don Quixote as of Sancho Panza, for, he said, though they had read the letters from Sancho and her ladyship the Duchess, they were still puzzled, and could not make out what was meant by Sancho's government, and above all of an island, when all or most of those in the Mediterranean belonged to his majesty. To this the page replied, as to Senor Sancho Panza's being a governor there is no doubt whatever, but whether it is an island or not that he governs, with that I have nothing to do, suffice it that it is a town of more than a thousand inhabitants, with regard to the acorns I may tell you my lady the duchess is so unpretending and unassuming that, not to speak of sending to beg for acorns from a peasant woman, she has been known to send to ask for the loan of a comb from one of her. Neighbors, for I would have your worships know that the ladies of Aragon, though they are just as illustrious, are not so punctilious and haughty as the Castilian ladies, they treat people with greater familiarity. In the middle of this conversation Sanchica came in with her skirt full of eggs, and said she to the page, Tell me, senor, does my father wear trunk minus hose since he has been governor? I have not noticed, said the page, but no doubt he wears them. Ah! My God, said Sanchica, what a sight it must be to see my father in tights. Isn't it odd that ever since I was born I have had a longing to see my father in trunk minus hose? As things go you will see that if you live, said the page, by God he is in the way to take the road with a sunshade if the government only lasts in two months more. The curate and the bachelor could see plainly enough that the page spoke in a waggish vein, but the fineness of the coral beads, and the hunting suit that Sancho sent, for Teresa had already shown it to them, did away with the impression, and they could not help laughing at Sanchica's wish, and still more when Teresa said, Senor curate, look about if there's anybody here going to Madrid or Toledo, to buy me a hooped petticoat a proper fashionable one of the best quality, for indeed and. Indeed I must do honor to my husband's government as well as I can, nay if I am put to it, and have to, I'll go to court and set a coach like all the world, for she who has a governor for her husband may very well have one and keep one. And why not, mother, said Sanchica, would to God it were to minus day instead of to minus morrow, even though they were to say when they saw me seated in the coach with my mother, see that rubbish, that garlic minus stuffed fellow's daughter how she goes stretched at her ease in a coach as if she was a she minus pope. But let them tramp through the mud, and let me go in my coach with my feet off the ground. Bad luck to backbiters all over the world, let me. Don Quixote Chapter 5687 Go warm and the people may laugh. Do I say right, mother? To be sure you do, my child, said Teresa and all this good luck, and even more, my good Sancho foretold me, and thou wilt see, my daughter, he won't stop till he has made me a countess, 
for to make a beginning is everything in luck, and as I have heard thy good father say many a time, for besides being thy father he's the father of Proverbs too, when they offer thee a heifer, run with a halter, when they offer thee a government, take it, when they would give thee a county, seize it. When they say, here, here to thee with something good, swallow it. Oh no! Go to sleep, and don't answer the strokes of good fortune, and the lucky chances that are knocking at the door of your house. And what do I care, added Sanchica, whether anybody says when he sees me holding my head up, the dog saw himself in hempen breeches, and the rest of it. Hearing this the curate said, I do believe that all this family of the Panzas are born with a sackful of proverbs in their insides, every one of them, I never saw one of them that does not pour them out at all times and on all occasions. That is true, said the page, for Senor Governor Sancho utters them at every turn, and though a great many of them are not to the purpose, still they amuse one, and my lady the Duchess and the Duke praise them highly. Then you still maintain that all this about Sancho's government is true, Senor, said the bachelor, and that there actually is a Duchess who sends him presents and writes to him. Because we, although we have handled the present and read the letters, don't believe it and suspect it to be something in the line of our fellow minus townsman Don Quixote, who fancies that everything is done by enchantment, and for this reason I am almost ready to say that I'd like to touch and feel your worship to see whether you are a mere ambassador of the imagination or a man of flesh and blood. All I know, sirs, replied the page, is that I am a real ambassador, and that Senor Sancho Panza is governor as a matter of fact, and that my lord and lady the duke and duchess can give, and have given him the same government, and that I have heard the said Sancho Panza bears himself very stoutly therein, whether there be any enchantment in all this or not, it is for your worships to settle between you, for that's all I know by the oath I swear, and that is by the life of my parents, whom I have still alive, and love dearly. It may be so, said the bachelor, but dubitat Augustinus. Doubt who will, said the page, what I have told you is the truth, and that will always rise above falsehood as oil above water, if not operibus credite, et non verbis. Let one of you come with me, and he will see with his eyes what he does not believe with his ears. Don Quixote Chapter 5688 It's for me to make that trip, said Sanchica, take me with you, senor, behind you on your horse, for I'll go with all my heart to see my father. Governor's daughters, said the page, must not travel along the roads alone, but accompanied by coaches and litters and a great number of attendants. By God, said Sanchica, I can go just as well mounted on a she-minus ass as in a coach, what a dainty lass you must take me for. Hush, girl, said Teresa, you don't know what you're talking about, the gentleman is quite right, for as the time so the behavior, when it was Sancho it was Sancha, when it is governor it's Sonora, I don't know if I'm right. Sonora Teresa says more than she is aware of, said the page, and now give me something to eat, and let me go at once, for I mean to return this evening. Come and do penance with me, said the curate at this, for Sonora Teresa has more will than means to serve so worthy a guest. The page refused, but had to consent at last for his own sake, and the curate took him home with him very gladly, in order to have an opportunity of questioning him at leisure about Don Quixote and his doings. The bachelor offered to write the letters in reply for Teresa, but she did not care to let him mix himself up in her affairs, for she thought him somewhat given to joking, and so she gave a cake and a couple of eggs to a young acolyte who was a penman, and he wrote for her two letters, one for her husband and the other for the duchess, dictated out of her own head, which are not the worst inserted in this great history, as will be seen farther on. Don Quixote Chapter 5689 Chapter 51 of the progress of Sancho's government and other such. Entertaining Matters Day came after the night of the governor's round, a night which the head minus carver passed without sleeping, so were his thoughts of the face and air and beauty of the disguised damsel, while the majordomo spent what was left of it in writing an account to his lord and lady of all Sancho said and did, being as much amazed at his sayings as at his doings, for there was a mixture of shrewdness and simplicity in all his words and deeds. The senior governor got up, and by Dr. Pedro Ricio's directions they made him break his fast on a little conserve and four sups of cold water, which Sancho would have readily exchanged for a piece of bread and a bunch of grapes, but seeing there was no help for it, he submitted with no little sorrow of heart and discomfort of stomach, Pedro Ricio having persuaded him that light and delicate diet enliven the wits, and that was what was most essential for persons. 
placed in command and in responsible situations where they have to employ not only the bodily powers but those of the mind also. By means of this sophistry Sancho was made to endure hunger, and hunger so keen that in his heart he cursed the government, and even him who had given it to him, however, with his hunger and his conserve he undertook to deliver judgments that day, and the first thing that came before him was a question that was submitted to him by a stranger, in the presence of the majordomo, and the other attendants, and it was in these words, Senor, a large river separated two districts of one and the same lordship minus will your worship please to pay attention, for the case is an important and a rather naughty one. Well then, on this river there was a bridge, and at one end of it a gallows, and a sort of tribunal, where four judges commonly sat to administer the law which the Lord of River, Bridge, and the Lordship had enacted, and which was to this effect, if anyone crosses by this bridge from one side to the other he shall declare on oath where he is going to and with what object, and if he swears, truly, he shall be allowed to pass, but if falsely, he shall be put to death for it by hanging on the gallows erected there, without any remission. Though the law and its severe penalty were known, many persons crossed, but in their declarations it was easy to see at once they were telling the truth, and the judges let them pass free. It happened however, that one man, when they came to take his declaration, swore and said that by the oath he took he was going to die upon that gallows that stood there and nothing else. The judges held a consultation over the oath, and they said, if we let this man pass free he has sworn falsely, and by the law he ought to die, but if we hang him, as he swore he was going to die on that gallows, and therefore swore the truth, by the same law he ought to go free. It is asked of your worship, Senor Governor, what are the judges to do with this man? For they are still in doubt and perplexity, and having heard of your worship's acute and exalted intellect, they have sent me. Don Quixote Chapter 51 690 to entreat your worship on their behalf to give your opinion on this very intricate and puzzling case. To this Sancho made answer, Indeed those gentlemen the judges that send you to me might have spared themselves the trouble, for I have more of the obtuse than the acute in me, but repeat the case over again, so that I may understand it, and then perhaps I may be able to hit the point. The querist repeated again and again what he had said before, and then Sancho said, It seems to me I can set the matter right in a moment, and in this way. The man swears that he is going to die upon the gallows, but if he dies upon it, he has sworn the truth, and by the law enacted deserves to go free and pass over the bridge, but if they don't hang him, then he has sworn falsely, and by the same law deserves to be hanged. It is as the senior governor says, said the messenger, and as regards a complete comprehension of the case, there is nothing left to desire or hesitate about. Well then I say, said Sancho, that of this man they should let pass the part that is sworn truly, and hang the part that has lied, and in this way the conditions of the passage will be fully complied with. But then, senor governor, replied the querist, the man will have to be divided into two parts, and if he is divided of course he will die, and so none of the requirements of the law will be carried out, and it is absolutely necessary to comply with it. Look here, my good sir, said Sancho. Either I'm a numbskull, or else there is the same reason for this passenger dying as for his living and passing over the bridge, for if the truth saves him the falsehood equally condemns him, and that being the case it is my opinion you should say to the gentleman who sent you to me that as the arguments for condemning him and for absolving him are exactly balanced, they should let him pass freely, as it is always more praiseworthy to do good than to do evil, this I would give signed with my name if I knew how to sign, and what I have said in this case is not out of my own head but one of the many precepts my master Don Quixote gave me the night before I left to become governor of this island, that came into my mind, and it was this, that when there was any doubt about the justice of a case I should lean to mercy, and it is God's will that I should recollect it now, for it fits this case as if it was made for it. That is true, said the major domo, and I maintain that Lycurgus himself, who gave laws to the Lacedaemonians, could not have pronounced a better decision than the great Panza has given, let the morning's audience close with this and I will see that the senior governor has dinner entirely to his liking. Don Quixote Chapter 51 691 That's all I ask for minus fair play, said Sancho. Give me my dinner, and then let it rain cases and questions on me, and I'll dispatch them in a twinkling. The majordomo kept his word, for he felt it against his conscience to kill so wise a governor by hunger particularly as he intended to have done with him that same night, playing off the last joke he was commissioned to practice upon him. It came to pass, then, that after he had dined that day, in opposition to the rules and aphorisms of Dr. Tertiafura, 
as they were taking away the cloth there came a courier with a letter from Don Quixote for the governor. Sancho ordered the secretary to read it to himself, and if there was nothing in it that demanded secrecy to read it aloud. The secretary did so, and after he had skimmed the contents he said, it may well be read aloud, for what Senor Don Quixote writes to your worship deserves to be printed or written in letters of gold, and it is as follows. Don Quixote of L.A. Mancha's letter to Sancho Panza, governor of the island of Barataria. When I was expecting to hear of thy stupidities and blunders, friend Sancho, I have received intelligence of thy displays of good sense, for which I give special thanks to heaven that can raise the poor from the dunghill, and of fools to make wise men. They tell me thou dost govern as if thou wert a man, and art a man as if thou wert a beast, so great is the humility wherewith thou dost comport thyself. But I would have thee bear in mind, Sancho, that very often it is fitting and necessary for the authority of office to resist the humility of the heart, for the seemly array of one who is invested with grave duties should be such as they require and not measured by what his own humble tastes may lead him to prefer. Dress well, a stick dressed up does not look like a stick, I do not say thou shouldst wear trinkets or fine raiment, or that being a judge thou shouldst dress like a soldier, but that thou shouldst. Array thyself in the apparel thy office requires, and that at the same time it be neat and handsome. To win the good minus will of the people thou governest there are two things, among others, that thou must do, one is to be civil to all, this however, I told thee before, and the other to take care that food be abundant, for there is nothing that vexes the heart of the poor more than hunger and high prices. Make not many proclamations, but those thou makest take care that they be good ones, and above all that they be observed and carried out, for proclamations that are not observed are the same as if they did not exist, nay, they encourage the idea that the prince who had the wisdom and authority to make them had not the power to enforce them, and laws that threaten and are not enforced come to ye like the log, the king of the frogs, that frightened them at first, but that in time they despised and mounted upon. Be a father to virtue and a stepfather to vice. Be not always strict, nor yet always lenient, but Observe a mean between these two extremes, for in that is the aim of wisdom. Visit the jails, the slaughter minus houses, and the market minus places, for the presence of the governor is of great importance in such places. It comforts the prisoners who are in hopes of a speedy release, it is the bugbear of the butchers who have then to give just weight, and it is the Don Quixote. Chapter 51 692 Terror of the market minus women for the same reason. Let it not be seen that thou art, even if perchance thou art, which I do not believe, covetous, a follower of women, or a glutton, for when the people and those that have dealings with thee become aware of thy special weakness they will bring their batteries to bear upon thee in that quarter, till they have brought thee down to the depths of perdition. Consider and reconsider, con and con over again the advices and the instructions I gave thee before thy departure hence to thy government, and thou wilt see that in them, if thou dost follow them, thou hast a help at hand that will lighten for thee the troubles and difficulties that beset governors at every step. Write to thy lord and lady and show thyself grateful to them, for ingratitude is the daughter of pride, and one of the greatest sins we know of, and he who is grateful to those who have been good to him shows that he will be so to God also who has bestowed and still bestows so many blessings upon him. My lady the duchess sent off a messenger with thy suit and another present to thy wife Teresa Panza, we expect the answer every moment. I have been a little indisposed through a certain scratching I came in for not very much to the benefit of my nose, but it was nothing, for if there are enchanters who maltreat me, there are also some who defend me. Let me know if the major domo, who is with thee had any share in the Trifaldi performance, as thou didst suspect, and keep me informed of everything that happens thee, as the distance is so short, all the more as I am thinking of giving over very shortly this idle life I am now leading, for I was not born for it. A thing has occurred to me which I am inclined to think will put me out of favor with the duke and duchess, but though I am sorry for it I do not care, for after all I must obey my calling rather than their pleasure, in accordance with the common saying, Amicus Plato, said Magus Amica Veritas. I quote this Latin to thee because I conclude that since thou hast been a governor thou wilt have learned it. Adieu, God keep thee from being an object of pity to anyone. Thy friend, Don Quixote of L.A. Mancha. Sancho listened to the letter with great attention, and it was praised and considered wise by all who heard it, he then rose up from table, and calling his secretary shut himself in with him in his own room, and without putting it off any longer set about answering his master Don Quixote at once, and he bade the secretary write down what he told him without adding or suppressing anything, which he did, and the answer was to the following effect. 
Sancho Panza's letter to Don Quixote of L.A. Mancha. The pressure of business is so great upon me that I have no time to scratch my head or even to cut my nails, and I have them so long minus God send a remedy for it. I say this, master of my soul, that you may not be surprised if I have not until now sent you word of how I fare, well or ill, in this government, in which I am suffering more hunger than when we two were wandering through the woods and wastes. Don Quixote Chapter 51 693 My lord the duke wrote to me the other day to warn me that certain spies had got into this island to kill me, but up to the present I have not found out any except a certain doctor who receives a salary in this town for killing all the governors that come here, he is called Dr. Pedro Ricio, and is from Tertiafura, so you see what a name he has to make me dread dying under his hands. This doctor says of himself that he does not cure diseases when there are any, but prevents them coming, and the medicines he uses are diet and more diet until he brings one down to bare bones, as if leanness was not worse than fever. In short he is killing me with hunger, and I am dying myself of vexation. For when I thought I was coming to this government to get my 